excited about the process that I'm about to undertake. I am ready to place uh, sashing and cornerstones in between each block of these, or each of these blocks. This is my beginner sampler quilt. If you follow my channel, uh, you know that fairly recently I made a beginner's, um, I made all of these beginner's blocks out of um, inspiration that I found in a book called the Block A Day Book. It has um, 365 quilt blocks that you can put together. Um, and I chose nine of those blocks to, um, to make a sampler quilt. I have um, a playlist for all, each of these blocks and I will link that in the, um, in the description box so you can go back and check that out if you haven't already. So I'm almost ready to, well not almost, I'm ready to finish the quilt top and I kind of have it um, laid out. This isn't the final layout I'm sure, but I have it laid out kind of the way it's going to be put together. So in between each or each block there's going to be another piece of fabric and then here as well so both vertically and horizontally there's going to be a piece of fabric i also would like to put cornerstones which will be little squares in between the sashing blocks so i'm going to have um one two three four i'm going to have 12 strips of fabric for the sashing and then four cornerstones i haven't decided about borders yet but I, um, but I want to put the, the rest of it together before I decide if I think the quilt should have a border. I have um, four fabrics that I've picked to kind of audition for, um, for the sashing. I have two that are kind of light, two that are kind of dark, so that I can see how uh, these play off of each, uh, or off of the blocks. Um, and then the idea for my uh, cornerstones, I think that I want to do red, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so as I get started with this process, first let me show you the fabrics that I'm choosing from, and then I'll go over the process about how I decide which one I like the best. As I am preparing to choose um, my sashing, I think it's important that you know like where this um, these fabrics came from. I recently did a fabric haul from a store called Fabric World, which is uh, near me in Stone Mountain, Georgia. So uh, if you want to check out that video, each one of these fabrics um, came from that haul. What happened was while I was making the video, I started to get inspired about this quilt because I saw a few fabrics and I was like, wow, that could be a really good possibility for some sashing. And so what I've done is I've pulled four of those fabrics. Um, I, I have I have in my brain a favorite, but I haven't um, laid it out at all to know what I think is going to be best. And sometimes um, the sashing, the fabric can kind of surprise you. So I wanted to definitely audition each one of these and I want to do it on camera so you can kind of see that process. Um, like I said, I have something in my brain about which one I think I'm going to pick, but I, I want to compare all of them before I make a final decision. What, uh, let me show you these fabrics first. Uh, the, they're all neutrally, and s some of them are kind of light, and some of them are kind of dark. So I just want to hold them uh, all up next to these blocks and see which one pops out the most. The first one is this uh, navy blue, and it looks like um, squares on it, but it's actually little white flowers. And the, uh, the fabric line is called Blossom, and so it's like little flower blossoms. That's the first one. The second one is this one. It's gray and it's actually called burlap and the fabric line is farm fresh. So it kind of looks like burlap. I like it because it does have a nice texture um, that might play well with these other fabrics. The next one is a tone on tone. It's a really um, light gray and white. And so I I really don't know about this one, but I just pulled it because it contrasts so much with the darker ones. So I'm gonna see how it works. And then the last one is kind of a medium. This is a boutique and it's kind of bluish grayish. So it could work. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna try to um, 
put the fabrics up on the wall, but I'm not sure if the blocks are going to stay up if I do that. Um, so let's go one at a time and I'll go over what I like and what I don't like on the camera. And then I'll take a picture of each one. And then hopefully that will make it easier once all of the pictures are side by side. So we're going to start, I think we'll start with this one since it's the one in my lap. Uh, let me set up the camera and I'll be right back. Before we look at the first, um, the first fabric here, um, I don't know how well you can see it behind me, but I do want to um, say that generally speaking, I don't think that there's a such thing as a wrong choice. Um, this is my own personal quilt that I'm making. Um, and so I can do, really, I can do whatever I want and it'll be fine. Um, however, in some cases there might be a better choice depending on what I, um, what my goal is for the quilt and how I want it to look and, you know, my own aesthetic. So, um, and the same for your quilt, no real such thing as a wrong choice, um, because it's based on your own personal preference. Um, but there may be a better choice for sashing or for blocks or whatever. So I would say, um, at least audition it just to see if you like it. You might be surprised with what you see. All right, so here's the first, um, here's the first fabric. It is that batik, that light bluish grayish. Um, and when I looked at it through the camera, it really kind of blends in with the background. So I don't know if this is the best choice for me. I will take a picture of it and I'll compare it to the others just to see how I like it. Um, but, uh, it, it seems to wash out, I guess is, is, like it washes out and kind of fades into the background. It doesn't really have any character of its own. Um, and then because of that, these really don't, our colors really don't pop out like I prefer. Um, so like even right here, it just all kind of goes bluish gray. It, it nothing really pops. So even though it, it wouldn't be a bad choice, there might be a better choice. So let's see what's next. Here is the second choice. This is the navy blue um, background with the little white blossoms on it. Um, as I'm looking at it here, um, because I'm so close to it, the blossoms seem to fight with it, uh, with the blocks a little bit, but I do like that the colors pop. When I look at it on the camera, however, a little further back, it um, I didn't notice that as much. Let me know in the comments if you feel like this um, this pattern kind of fights with the, um, the vibrancy of the blocks. I'm not sure. I am going to take a picture of it. And, um, and once I compare it with everything, then I have a better idea, but I like that the colors pop. I'm just not sure if the pattern is too busy in the background. So let me take a picture of it and we'll go on to the next one. So this is the, uh, very light gray background and as I'm looking at it on the, um, right up close to it, one thing that I like about it is it's very soothing. It makes the blocks kind of, um, they pop a little bit, but it's really, I don't know, like it, it just, to me, it just kind of calms the blocks down a little bit. And I did not think that I would like this particular, um, fabric as a, as a sashing, but now that I look at it, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I, surprisingly, I do like it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't seem to compete with the blocks at all. The blocks really seem to shine. And I kind of like that they float a little bit, um, on the background. So this is, um, this decision is going to be a little bit harder than I thought. Um, there's one more and then I get to put them all together and see which one, um, speaks to me the most. So let me take a picture of this one and then um, we'll look at the last one. So here's the last, um, the last fabric. It's the, the gray burlap kind of um, print or background or fabric, whatever. Um, I like this one because it lets the blocks pop. It does not compete with the blocks. And just like with um, the lighter gray, I feel like it really calms these quilt blocks and brings them together um, in a, in a really cohesive way. Um, 
I want to take a picture of it and then we're gonna put, hopefully I can figure out how to do a collage, put all four of them on the same picture and then, um, and then we'll see which one pops out the most. I hope that you noticed that I did not use the same four blocks with every, every um, background or every sashing because I just wanted to make sure that, that I think all of the, um, I wanted to give all of the blocks a chance to see how they play with the sashing or with a potential sashing fabric. Um, I'm really excited about my choice. I wonder if you, uh, what do you think I'm going to pick? Think about it. Um, and then we'll, I'll take a picture of this one, make the collage, and then we'll see what the final choice is. Did you guess that this one would be the one that would work out? Um, if you follow my channel, uh, you know about the contrast between using a lighter sashing and a darker sashing and um, how it can really help to make the colors pop just a little bit more. Um, I did love that light gray um, uh, option for a sashing, but I like this one more because it allows these blocks to, um, to kind of shine, but they're not like sticking out. And then to me, when I put all of my blocks together, this is the block that has the least contrast out of all of these other blocks, and you can even see it here. But against this gray, it, even it kind of pops and it can shine a little bit too. So I'm really excited about choosing this one. And I would encourage you when you are making decisions about um, backgrounds or about sashing that you kind of um, do something like this. Put them all, the, uh, get some different options, try them out. And even like um, I do this, even if I'm at the quilt shop, I'll get several different choices and then um, lay the blocks out on them to see which one uh, fits the most or which one I like the best. So try it out. Don't be afraid to audition pieces. Your first choice might not be the correct choice. I was really rooting for the navy blue. I really was. But then um, that pattern is, the uh, pattern on the fabric is just not uniform enough to let these individual blocks shine. Also that navy may have been a little bit too dark where this gray is, it's it's a, uh, a tint that can complement the um, the blocks without overpowering them. And maybe that navy blue was competing with the blocks a little bit. So um, next is going we're going to cut these sashing strips, and I get to think about some cornerstones. I will do some um, a little bit of cutting on camera, so let's check that out. I've chosen my fabric for my sashing, and I'm going to get ready to cut it. I'm going to need. 12 strips of sashing to um, put into the quilt. So I need to make sure that I can get those 12 pieces out of this one uh, bit of fabric. It is about 25 or 26 inches uh, wide, but it is a full width of fabric. Ideally, I would love to get four inch sashing but I'm not 100% sure that I can get that out of this. Well, let's say four times four. No, it's, they're going to have to be a little bit smaller because of uh, the way this fabric was cut, the way the piece is cut. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now, the first thing that I'm going to think about is how many piece, how many sashing pieces I can get out of one strip of fabric. So I have to um, think about the... Uh, the width of the fabric, which in this case is about 42 inches. There's about two inches of um, selvage, like a little less than two inches of selvage on, um, on both sides of this piece. And so I, it's about 42 inches. And each one of my sashing uh, strips needs to be 16 and a quarter inches wide to match the, um, the size of the blocks. So each of the blocks are cut 16 and a quarter inches square. So the, the sashing needs to be 16 and a quarter inches. And since I need 12 pieces, I need to figure out how many um, I can get out of one, and then that'll help me determine how many strips I need to get all 12. So what I'm going to do is I will divide the width of fabric, which is 42, by 16 and a quarter. And that's gonna give me two and a little bit left over, not quite three, 
Um, so I can only get uh, two of my sashing pieces out of each strip of fabric. And that's step one, that's really important. Um, the next thing I need to do is really measure how, um, how much fabric I'm gonna have to cut. And from that measurement, I can determine uh, what the width of the strips is gonna be. If I wanted to for sure get a four inch strip, then I would not use this piece of fabric. I would get another piece that's a little bit bigger, which might make me um, rethink my color choices um, because I know that that navy blue, there was plenty of, um, there was plenty of fabric to get uh, six strips of um, four inch sashing. But nevertheless, I can use this and it'll be fine. Okay, so what I need to do first before I um, do that, I'm gonna open it out a little bit and I'm gonna line up the, um, actually before I do that, I'm actually gonna cut off this selvage. And the reason that I'm gonna cut off the selvage is because I really like it. And so I wanna keep it and put it in a different project. And usually when I cut off the selvage, I cut off the, the one that's decorative, one of them. Um, may not have anything on it. It may just be white and I usually don't cut those but I, if it has writing on it I like to cut it So I'm gonna cut this sashing I'm gonna cut it Three eighths Above so that I can get a little bit of the um, of the actual fabric Or maybe a quarter inch. I'll cut it a quarter inch And I do have a longer ruler, but it's still not um it's still not as long as the fabric, so. And you can make really nice projects using just the selvages. I made a zipper bag once and I may make some more of those that use the selvage. So I'm just gonna cut this off right quick and then I can, um, then I need to make one more cut before I decide how wide my pieces are gonna be. All right, good. That cell is going to go into a different location. Now, what I'm looking at is this edge of my um, fabric. I, I hope you can see it. It's very uneven. So I'm going to um, line everything up and I'm going to cut off one side to make it um, so that I have a, a clean edge because then I'll get a more accurate measurement. So let's see. I'm just making sure that there's no warping in the fabric and then I'm folding it on itself and then on itself again. Okay. I just kind of smooth it out. There's some, something funky going on, but I think, it, I think we can work it out. Okay. And so now I'm going to take my ruler and I actually have two rulers that I'm using today. I have my shape cut plus and that's what I'm going to use to get my, um, I think I can get my four inch sashing. I just thought about it. Okay, so I'm just gonna line this up so that I can catch that straight edge. The ruler's upside down and still upside down. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I can get a decent edge on here. And then I'm just gonna cut this edge off. I'll go over a little bit more. Okay. So, let's see. Here we go. So now I have a nice clean edge. Now I'm gonna measure this, and since I need um, since I need 12 sashings and I can get two per strip, I need six strips of fabric to get um, to get all of my pieces. And I'm gonna measure this, and I have like 27 inches. So I'm excited because now I realize that I can get my six strips out of this fabric because four times six is 24, so I don't actually need the whole piece. Um, I actually have a little strip left over. So I'm going to use my shape cut ruler here, and I'm gonna cut four, no, I'm gonna cut six four inch strips out of this i'm going to line up the zero line at the edge here that i just cut and i'm lining up the uh the horizontal line with my fabric 
with the fold in the fabric. And I'm just gonna cut every four inches till I get my six strips. So here we go. Four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16. Okay. So I've laid out the quilt so far. Um, and I like, generally, I like the way it looks. There are a few little changes that I want to make. Let me talk you through them first, and then I'm going to um, switch it around, and then I'll show you the final, or what I think will be the final uh, layout on camera. So the first thing is I took the, that blue um, that I wanted to use as the sashing and I just set it here so that it would mimic the cornerstones and while I think it's an okay look I want to instead see if I can pull some individual fabrics that are from some of the colors in the quilt this blue it seems a little bit too um, a little too dark for me right now so I'm going to go back and and change that in just a second another thing is that I like the layout for the most part but there are two blocks that seem to be a little bit out of place at first I thought it was this one that's going to be the most out of place but it turns out that this one seems to be not quite right this one seems to be not quite quite right and the reason is because there's no um, background on the outside of the block so I'm gonna move those and then move a, a few more things um, a few more blocks around change out those cornerstones and then we'll see what the hopefully what the final layout is going to look like here is what i feel like is the final layout of this quilt now what i've done is i've gone back even after i um even after i did a final layout i went back and looked and i looked at it through the camera and i made a few more edits um to where the blocks were just because of like this block is still um, low contrast compared to all the other ones and so I wanted to put it kind of in the middle and so I moved these three around one two three I moved them around a couple different times to make sure that um, that I was happy with the placement um, I'm not going to try to sew it together today I'm gonna let it sit probably for a day or two just sitting as I walk past it just kind of look and make sure that I'm still happy with the placement I have not yet cut these squares um, out. These are larger pieces of fabric that I've just kind of uh, finagled in place behind the other pieces. So I do need to press those and cut out some four inch squares and then I'll be um, ready to sew everything together. I'm going to sew it in rows. So this is a row and then there are the, the block rows and then there are two sashing rows and um, then I'll put everything together. Hopefully it'll be ready by next Wednesday when I have my Whip It Wednesday video. If not, that's okay. Um, from that point, I'll decide if I wanna put a border on it or if I'm just going to um, leave it as is. And what I'm excited about is I think I already have the binding fabric and if you've been watching this video, you know which one it is because I've been playing with it this whole time. If you have any questions about what you've seen in the video, please leave them in the comments below. Please go back and check out the videos for each of these blocks in the beginner sampler quilt. I hope you enjoyed that playlist. Um, thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already. Even if you're a subscriber, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you get any um, alerts about new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.